Hello, Christian Life Assembly. Uh, last week, we celebrated communion and we celebrated Remembrance Day. Today, we're remembering the persecuted church, all important parts of November. Today, our guest is Hannah Ratnam, and uh, I would like her to introduce herself and tell us why the persecuted church is important to her. Hannah, welcome. Thank you, Pastor. Share with us a little bit about why the persecuted church is important to you. Um, I'm born and brought up in Pakistan, and um, since I have been moved to Canada, persecuted church is um, a burden on my shoulder. God has been showing me a lot of things about persecuted church in Pakistan, and my dream has a lot to do with that. My persecuted childhood, my uh, schooling, college, everything has connection with that. So it's really important and I want this to uh, tell the whole world what's going on there. You mentioned a dream and this is one of the reasons we're interviewing you today. God gave you a dream. And so tell us a little bit about that dream. On 19th September 2013, I had a dream. Uh, it's a church in Pakistan, which was, uh, according to the dream, it was demolished after two bomb blasts. But I prayed nonstop for that church and people because I felt that pain sitting in Canada and I intercede for them. And that is what I have been talking all these years with many people. So what actually transpired is that God gave you a dream. Then how many days later was it that the bomb blast from your dream actually took place in Pakistan? It was 22nd September 2013, three days later. Three days later. So this is amazing. So God gave Hannah a dream uh, and then she prayed for three days. And you believe that your prayers mitigated what could have been a disaster. I mean, still, uh, there were many people injured by the bomb blast and a few were killed, but it wasn't as bad as what your dream uh, showed you. That's right. I prayed and fasted. I yeah. was in in the corner, just leaving everything my life and praying and fasting for them. Wow, that's amazing. So God reached thousands of miles over to Canada, shared a dream, uh, equipped an intercessor, and then uh, the bomb blast went off and uh, many people were saved in Pakistan because of your prayers. And then something else happened. That's not the end of the story. Actually, uh, there is something else. Tell us what happened after you had this dream and after the bomb blast. It never stopped. All that just was coming on and on in my uh, visions and my dreams. I can see people with my open eyes. I could hear their cry all the time. It was as if I'm there all the time. So I prayed for five years just for their pain and suffering. And they were asking help. I could hear their voice saying, help us. So that was a bothering uh, situation. And I prayed five years for that. And then, um, God wanted me to write this and I prayed for two years for a script writer. I'm not a script writer because I'm, I don't have good English. Um, so God sent me an angel, her name is Shelley, and she wrote a beautiful script for me. We're standing uh, beside an award, so I'm hoping we can see this. Hannah allowed this script be, to be entered into a Christian film it's called CIFF, Christian International Faith and Family Festival in Toronto. Yeah, and what happened? <laughs> <laughs> they just love the story. They accept my script, nominated, and then on 19 September 2020, it is awarded. So it's exactly the same year and same, uh, same date and same month. The day of my dream and the day of my award. Wow, that's amazing. So we're so very proud of Hannah. And today, as we remember the persecuted church, we're here to ask you, Christian Life Assembly, to pause, to remember brothers and sisters around the world experiencing such intense pressure. And we're asking you to pray for them, to pray that God would defend them, that God would strengthen them, that God would make a way for them to thrive in their context so many would come to know Jesus. We are standing with you, Hannah, and uh, 
If you want to know more about Hannah's story, we can go to hannahratnam.com. Is that right? That's right. And you've got information about this great story and next steps because you want God to continue to lead this towards production. That's right. Well, God bless you. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming and sharing your story with us today. And CLA, may this story uh, touch many hearts as we mobilize the church to remember the persecuted church. God bless you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hannah's story reminds us of the power of love and prayer. Many in the persecuted church are part of contexts where the dominant culture does not embrace Christianity. There's constant pressure to assimilate. They face discrimination of employment, unjust detention and arrest, abuse of all forms. Parents and children f- face trauma, often are limited to access of medical, food and shelter. They lack Bibles, discipleship, mentoring. I'm going to ask those in the